Bolly stretches her back and kind of puts her fists in her lower back and pushes it out. You may need to stretch. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm glad to be out of meetings for once, she says. And on to dinner, she says, looking at you and kind of dragging you off. We're going to, out of game. We're going to Leslie's. Yeah. Okay. That's where she is headed, cool, clearly. Cool. Okay. Okay. Um, she says, okay, bye, guys. See you tomorrow, I guess. Euphemia waves, follows. Um, as you head out on the street, she says, you know, I really wish I had some kind of number of how many secrets Juniper's keeping at once. <clears throat> I feel like the number would be so high it would make your head hurt. She says, none of you can have any idea how long I've lived. My <laughs> memories existed longer than Mythia itself. <laughs> She smiles. She kind of gives you a nudge. She says, this hair is incredible. She says, ever since I touched Florian, I need to have that boy as my dresser. I am tempted to try to brush him and have him get my hair too. She says, do you think you would kneel down on all fours and be a footstool as I get into bed? Very odd fantasies. I'm not She just there. went from zero to 60, really. You send me a way to be, you know? <clears throat> He has that defiant personality type. I think you could break him. She says, well, I hope so. She says, oh. But I'm not going to try right now. So, how are you feeling about? Mm, not great. I wish you could come. I wish all of you could come with us. And I'm worried we're going to find the aisle. And then... And then what? And then go. <laughs> and if you find it, and go. Well, I hope that... Uh, I hope that Johnny is working with Roland has paid off, she says. Were you all able to meet up and trade with Harper at all? We went over there. Yeah. We had a couple drinks, and he talked to us about what we were trying to gain out of it. And then we discussed some plans for tomorrow. I'm pretty sure that we won't be invited to the summit, she says. Though I've heard that you will. I don't think it's a good idea for me to go. They want to show you off. You're the questers. They want everybody to help you. I think you're the big sailing point. Sailing point. I think it worked either way. Also not there. As much as that might be true, I'm not sure how great of a selling point that I personally will be if all I can do is stare murderlessly at one of the kings in attendance. Well, we're short. You can just be behind Isaac. <laughs> Or perception. Uh, no, no, no. Wait. Twenty. You suddenly hear a noise above you. It's very slight. You she look up off. and see, like, there's sort of two gutters hanging on the alleyway that you're walking through. Um, Bali's going to kind of look over at you. What? Here's something. A black shape is going to jump out of the night, coming down towards you. The humanoid figure is going to whirl midair, its foot flinging around with the force of a very powerful roundhouse kick directly to your head. An attack. At least you're not totally alone like I was when this happened. Yeah, but she's going to be more worried that Bali's going to get hurt than if she was just yeah, there solo. Yeah, uh, How close is Euphemia to Bali? If you are adjacent to one another. If she dodges, could it hit Bali is what, is what I'm asking you. 
it's possible it wouldn't hit her on the head or anything. It would probably kick her on the shoulder. She'll focus on pushing Bali back and try to deflect with her arm. 18's the lowest. 19's the next one. Out of just curiosity, what part are they kicking her with? Like, yes, their foot, but like, it's like their, the side of their foot, the bottom of their foot, like the top of their foot. Uh, it's like the midpoint of the, the calf. Okay, thank you. Okay. You said 18 and 19? Mm-hmm. They both hit. It hits if it's right at the armor class, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I have a question. Yeah. If somebody hits me with their body, I mean, their body's right there for me to reach into, right? Yes. Could she? You don't have a reaction to use your ability. You can only use it as an action. Flavorfully, yes, but mechanically, no. Mechanically, if she did have a reaction to use, could she react by having her hand at the ready? No. Explicitly because her abilities are already disgustingly powerful. <laughs> All right. Like, could she, if she wanted to, like, you know, hold her dagger, like, right next to her face so that, like, when they attack, they <laughs> like, dagger and then... How many, yeah, how much HP do you have? Still, but... How much HP do you have? Uh, 66. How do you Okay. The figure is going to whirl extremely acrobatically. They are dressed all in black. An assassin. When they come down, their leg is going to collide with your skull, sending you flying into the brick wall and shattering your nose. You feel you, this part of your face seems to be broken. You are bleeding profusely. Bali, at your very small warning, is going to duck below the fist, but then a drop kick hits her right in the shoulder, dislocating her arm. You are under assault by two large humanoid figures. Both wrapped in black. Great. Okay. As you whirl around, you are staggered and blinded by bleeding that is happening out of your nose. You feel like your face is crushed. You whirl around and see a figure sort of like put out their hands towards you, getting ready to attack you in the alleyway. Okay. And roll initiative, please. question out of game, I'm sorry. Um, I know with Satan's game, you can teleport. Does it have any restrictions on bringing someone with you? Yes, you cannot do. You cannot bring them with you. All right, it is you first. That was weirdly synchronized. <laughs> I wish I was there. <laughs> I know, right? Like how we wished we were there last time you got attacked. Make a disadvantage perception check to see through your blood. Oh, that's fine. Oh, they were both oh no, one was good. Damn it. Uh eleven. You blink through the pain. You're going to see that both are armed, but neither has drawn weapons. You'll also see that they are both feminine forms. She'll spit out blood. Who the fuck are you? Both figures are going to look at each other, and you see a very uh, shapely jawline on the one attacking you. And uh, no makeup. Uh, but it is definitely a human or an elf, maybe. Uh, by the jawline and the height. Nothing that seems familiar to her? No. Okay. Uh, how far away is the closest opponent? Five feet. All right. Uh, she's going to make an attempt to kind of roll forward and reach her hand through their leg and pull out their life. As you roll forward, uh, make an attack roll, please. Please be good. 
Oh, thank God, because the other one was the one. Uh, it's the same as Lament, right? Mm -hmm. 22. All right. As you roll forward, the figure is clearly ready for you. Um, it seems to know your ability. Uh, as you come forward, it's going to catch your hand like this in the midst of both of them, and then like twist to maybe break your arm. But you're so small and compact that you actually are able to sort of roll with it, and you literally like roll all the way over, and then you take your other hand and reach into your knee. Um, as you do, Stealing her kneecap right now. I know. <laughs> it's really awkward. Uh, your hand barrels through her, and you suddenly see it's Roland's sister, Mary Tarkan. She immediately hesitates. She just, she freezes, frankly. The figure steps back from you. They have no idea who you are. They're out for your bounty. Mm, mm, mm. Your Roland's sister? You're gonna see both of them hesitate, look at each other. Uh, as she's going to like start, and then, you know Roland? I'm one of his companions on the quest to save fate. All right, so like Bali is like being dragged by her hair and like the other woman has like her fist up ready to like sock Bali right in the face. Um, Euphemia looks over. If you keep that up, I promise you no matter who you are, I will kill you. Stop. Now. Roll a intimidate or persuasion check, your choice. Let's be honest. Are you really trying to persuade No, I'm trying to intimidate them. <laughs> Okay, you've chosen Intimidate. The DC is slightly higher on Intimidate. I mean, but that's what she's going for. <laughs> I think my dice are cursed this time. DC 16. 13. 13. God. The sister, Carrie, is going to say, knock them out, sort it out after. And then she's gonna poof, and knock Bolly right in the head. And Molly's gonna just like, she's dazed, uh, like twinkling. Uh, Mary has stepped away from your hand and is going to draw out a knife. All right, and you have the rest of your turn available. Can she put on Satan's guilt? Does she have to put it on, or can she just hold it, or can she just use it from the pouch? I would designate it as an action, only because you have to reach up and clamp it onto your back, but you used an action to reach inside of her. You don't have an action to use it. Okay. So all I have is movement? You have a bonus. Wait, I do? You have a bonus action left, yeah. Okay. Um, can she actually dash over to where Bali is? A dash will provoke an OA. All right, fine. She's going to draw Pearl's Lament, and she's going to stand her ground. All right. What was Roland's sister's name, the one who's sick? She's not sick, she's blind. Well, she has illnesses. She is sickly. She is sickly. Oh. Yeah. I want to go with you. Your mom's going to be so disappointed in you. She just cooked me dinner yesterday. <laughs> uh, the sickly one is Allison. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, please roll a constitution saving throw for Bali. She dies. <laughs> Seriously. 15. All right. Uh, Bali gets her, so she's like dazed. Um, and you're going to see uh, Carrie sort of draws her fist back to punch her again. But when she goes in this time, Bali's going to headbutt her fist. 
Um, and she's oh, like, yeah. ow. And she, uh, Bali stomps on her foot and then rolls backwards and like draws out her knife and sort of like blinks through the pain towards her. Carrie's going to like go like that and a blade of shadow will come out of her hand. Um, quickly. <laughs> All right, it's you. She says, I'm telling you again to drop your weapons. You see the reflection of light in her eyes go to your dagger. You may reroll the intimidate check. Mm. Maybe I should use a different dice. You have inspiration. No, no, she I used, used it. it. She used it last time. Oh, did you? And then she hesitated because there's no way she was going to like pull the life out of Roland's sister. Oh, that's fair. It's probably <laughs> wise. Yeah, not going to happen. <laughs> I can re-roll it. Uh, yeah, it's a one. <laughs> yeah. Roll on a different part of the yeah, table. Yeah. That part of the table is bad. Don't Maybe roll over here. This is bad, too. <laughs> right here. There's hot spots. Warm, warm and cold <laughs> spots on the table. Uh, it's a 16, then. That's on. Okay. She'll say, she'll also say again, <laughs> I sat at the table being served food by your mother yesterday, you nitwit. Drop it. What you have? She says. Out of game, I can't remember. What was it? Remind me. Was it clam chowder? Did I make that up? Uh. Why am I remembering clam chowder? No, she made like a casserole. She'll say it was a casserole. And then, hold on. And was it the sister that bakes as well? Uh, yeah, Allison helps out. Yeah. Yeah. And some dessert from Allison. And you held the baby. You're gonna see like a kind of like, then she's gonna like- Euphemia's gonna mirror put the knife exactly away. what she does in terms of timing. So you're a hero? Oh my good days. They look at each other. Bali's like, she's kind of like trying to keep her eyes up on her. She's gonna kind of hold up her hands and back away from Bali and the shadow just kind of like back into her hand. She goes, my bad, my bad. She says, yeah, you're bad, Bali says. You do have a good kick. You've got a good bounty. Mary says. Mary and Carrie, born twins, their fate gives them control over darkness. They use it as weapons and to be able to sneak. You caught one of them while they were stepping out of the shadow realm. Well, now that we've been introduced, we were on the way to uh, get dinner. So we'll be moving along now. Wait, where? Mary's going to pull off her hood. I'm getting the sense that you're just really hungry right now. <laughs> Leslie's mother's house? Both of them look at each other suddenly, looking like young, like, That's not the they are probably in their mid-twenties, but they look like they're like 17, 18 at this point. Euphemia is looking at them. Should I have just offered you food in place of our bounty? Carrie's going to be like, that probably would have stopped us. <laughs> if it was her food. <laughs> Not there. Euphemia <laughs> looks at Bali. How'd you get such a big bounty on you anyway? I mean, besides the weapon. That faded? She looks like she's talking shop suddenly. Yep, she says. With half your face broken and blood just like... Exactly. She's gonna like reach in and pull out like a part of a cookie. Here, she says, and she tosses it to you. She tosses it to Bali. She's going to get out another one and toss it to you. She'll take that one. <laughs> All right. Bali's going to look at it and then like... Euphemia will wince with every chew as she eats it. The moment you swallow it, both of you are back to full health. Oh, she we need to get a bucket of those cookies from this journey. Those are so useful. Yeah, that's why we've got to eat at Allison's, she says. So, can we go? She looks at Bali. I would have killed both of them. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah, I think so. We fed them to the sharks. 
<laughs> what sharks here a thousand See, miles from an ocean? I would have said, sure, you guys can come with us and made it so they couldn't actually eat anything the entire time. They put it in their mouth and the food would teleport elsewhere. But I'm not oh, there. That's, that's terrifying! <laughs> and I love it! Is it landlocked? <laughs> it's right Garen there. Garen is the big red one. I see. It has a river. A river runs through it. Sorry. Sorry. She says... I don't think we can stop you. Uh, she says, I don't know. Maybe. Euphemia looks at Bali to be like, can you believe this shit? Bali's kind of like, um, I mean, I guess if you call a truce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We already did that, right? Right. She walks forward and kind of links her arm with Bali. Let's go. And walks on. The two of them are going to swiftly follow you. They have no shame whatsoever, do they? <laughs> Love it. Master. Shall I go gather the new supplies? With this special crystal placed within the robot's creatures, they shall be fully restored. It's unfortunate that it was so expensive. Well, I'm always willing to pay for quality. Let's go together. We can have them walk back with us. That way you don't have to carry them. Indeed, Master. On your way there, you are... Uh, Prongor is going to be consistently checking... Uh, outside of the citadel, there is a mailbox down at the very base of the citadel steps. So every time he goes by it, he's sort of checking it out. And uh, he goes, another one from Saltmaster, he says. Citadel? Uh, yeah, Anatomy? did you guys not go back to the citadel? No, we, I think we did. Okay. Okay. Uh, hand it over. I want to see what it says. All right. As you open it up... <coughs> It's confusing. Apparently there is a, a man in a red mask who came to the gravestone and they thought they knew who he was, but now they don't remember. Um, and they don't really remember what he did either, but they did overhear a conversation um, that Apparently the guy in red is some kind of guard and that he left to drink. So if you want the stuff in there, now is the chance. They've managed to uh, subtly uh, weaken the lock so that they can break it open if need be. They seem very excited about the prospect of sort of uh, swiping this treasure trove. Okay. Sounds like a unique opportunity, Master, but should we wait for Juniper to gain permission? That wasn't my original plan, but with the way things have shaken out, I don't think we have much of a choice. Well, we could always do a preamble walk, Master, and then go officially with the group, he says. Well, what I'm thinking is... <coughs> have Saul Winter alone. Just scout it out. See what it's like down there. But don't do anything dangerous, and don't leave any marks. He nods. Very well, Master. Um, he's gonna like hand you the paper and quill and like turn around to like use his back as like the okay. writing surface. Uh, and then as Isaac's doing that, he includes instructions for like he so he set up a kind of a solid base and network within Selenox. He wants to start a, a much smaller version of that in Garen just to like make a small footprint for himself. And so he's gonna give them instructions to find like a and some money, find a small building to act as a base, things like that. Okay. If 
if anyone can get in and out of there alive, it'll probably be him. And whatever he can find will be valuable information for when we go in there ourselves. He says, right, of course, master. He says, as you place the note in the mailbox and head off, uh, you gather the machines and proudly watch them walk out of the engineer's shop. They're not like falling on their face anymore while walking. They seem significantly more well-balanced and they have a new shine and gleam to them as they've been substantially polished and the blood and dirt and mud <clears throat> from the doom ridge has been all washed off. Okay, I give the shopkeeper a nice tip. He is, uh, he is just bowing and scraping and fawning at your feet. Uh, and his whole staff is there and they're like giving you this like, like proud salute oh and praise God. as you walk out of the building. It's I, real, it's real high class like treatment. I guess I paid them a lot of money. You did. You did <laughs> give them a lot of money. Um, and the guy's going to give you his card. Uh, did, you, you formed this powerful business connection with this guy. He's going to, like, check in. He wants to know if you want a room in the in Giren. Like, they'll hook you up with a hotel. Okay. Now, what about your shield, now that all of that is done? He says, it is finished, Master. We just need to pick it up. How far is it from here? We're in the right district, Master. Just a couple blocks. All right. Let's go together. So It'll probably be my last outing in the city before I retreat to either the Academy or the Citadel for good. After being attacked by those bounty hunters, I don't think we can take any more risks. So in the meantime, you, Saul, and the new recruits will be running errands for me while we're still here. Of course, Master, he says. Very smart. About five minutes later, Prongor is like looking at himself in the mirror and then like whoosh, the shield kind of goes into his metal arm and then he's like whoosh. And it comes out again. He's like, it's very fetching, isn't it, Master? I feel like a noble knight. Do I remind you of Roland? <laughs> more and more by the day. Now we just need to get you a haircut. It's a joke, because he's bald. He says, my seven hairs, Master. They shall cover my entire scalp eventually. He says, I'm not even sure your fate could possibly cover that. No, maybe one day. He goes... I do feel more protective with the shield on, though. It's not too heavy, is it? You think we should have gone with blue? No. Too flashy. Yes, don't draw attention, he says. He, <laughs> the bald hunchback with a giant metal <laughs> arm says. <laughs> um, you really should animate a wig for him. <laughs> 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 you do one of those ones that are sculpted into like the shape of a swan so it can attack oh. too. <laughs> I was thinking of trying to like pompadour. I don't want to think of a wig like walking along. Oh no no like, like on his head. I know. Like, like, and then like the wings yeah. could attack. Yeah. And so could the beak. He goes. It would all be hair. Man, that's just all great ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all gone marvelous, Master. He says. And as he walks out, shall we head back and check the mail? You are awfully intent at picking up any new mail that comes in. What are you waiting for? Did you order something? I'm merely excited to coordinate with this new group, he says. I want to make sure it works out appropriately. I see. So right. sick you're getting back into crap. He is really happy about that. I appreciate your diligence. Even after all this time, you haven't lost your touch. All right. So, um... We're going to roll a check here. When you all return to the mail and pull it out, there is an urgent letter. We're going to roll a d20. Mm -hmm. Saul has certainly found some things in the forgotten place, and he has at least tried to pick up one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to see which one he tried to pick up and how bad it was. So there's more than one thing in there. There are many things okay. in there. So we're going to roll a d20. On a one, two, or three, Saul is dead. Okay, that's it? Only a one, two, three? <laughs> Don't, are you trying? You want to get rid of him so it, it doesn't have the issue. On an 18, 19, or 20, <laughs> that smirk. I know. Saul has picked a one that might work for him. Okay. Everything else, Saul is currently cursed. Okay. And depending on what you roll, what item is cursed him. 
Go ahead. All right, I'm going to use the cursed dice for this. Ever since I've been just so interested in potentially like killing his own henchmen. It's all about motivation. Ten. Ten. <laughs> <clears throat> so disappointed. Oh, he's alive. I feel the disappointment in a lot of that. Please roll a constitution saving throw for Sol. Okay. Uh, DC... Cursed one. You need to roll a 13 or above. 13 or above. There's no 15. 15, okay. Unfortunately, the cursed dice isn't that it just rolls low, it's that it does the exact opposite it of what you It rolls against want. you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Soul has went inside, said that they're, uh, the way that you described it, in the inn is exactly the way it looks. They say that it was like sealed and that when they opened it, there was like gas that escaped. Oh. Um, <laughs> he, he went down like a stairwell that had like a, a soil ceiling and he said he saw like the roots of a tree come through the ceiling in, in this big room. It's like a soil, it smells of earth. There's tons of stuff. And it all looks magical and dangerous. But he saw a particularly valuable looking gemstone and he went to go grab it. And the gem tried to, started like sinking into his flesh. And he, he grabbed it and like fought against it and like threw it into the wall and it clanked down on the ground. But uh, he sort of grabbed it with like some cloth, like between like a ripped piece of shirt mm -hmm. and like carried it out with him. Um, so now they have it, and <laughs> oh my God. Um, this is the worst outcome. No, it could be worse. It could be worse. Okay. Well, I can think of about fifty ways it could be yeah. worse. Ash says that he has uh, that the item is the strongest enchantment magic that he's ever felt. Um, Who's the tiefling, right? He's the tiefling. Yeah. Um, the uh, sorcerer, and that nobody should touch it, but that it could be a powerful tool in the right hands. Um, so they they would like to meet up with you and see what your very magically inclined eye has to see on this this crystal. And they have shut the doors back up. Okay. You have bad habits, girl. I'll touch it. I'll touch anything. <laughs> Why would Red be guarding that personally? I guess Isaac wouldn't know it's Red guarding it because of Red's fate. He'd just be like a guy in a red mask. I wonder who that is. Well, you do know of Red Chaos. You just don't, you just don't know person. that you right. know him. You also know that you can't remember him when you, like you know of his fate. Yeah. No, whether or not. Or actually, you would know that you know him because you guys have to talk to Harper's crew many times. You just don't remember any of the interactions with him. Okay. So he would be able to make that deduction of, oh, I guess that's red. Doing Okay. Um, you may roll a very difficult history check uh, to gem? determine about the gem, yeah. Um, DC 22. That's my history. So was he actually cursed or did he throw the curse off? He did beat the curse. Okay. I have a plus oh, zero in history, so I have to crit, right? You actually can't make it at all. No, There's no crits and skills. Can I roll and get like Can a partial success himself? if I get like a high DC? I gleam something. Can he bless himself or guidance himself? You could guidance right? yourself to, to succeed. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. D4, I think. Yep, D4. Is that a D6? No, no. no. <laughs> okay, no, definitely not. <laughs> Is that a two? Yeah, it was a two, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, you've never heard of a crystal do that before. Okay. Me too. Uh, so, do you Pretty agree to meet with them? Yeah. Okay. Let's we can play with all the fun stuff. Juniper. Yes. As you walk outside of the meeting room, Hero is going to. Juniper, hang on. Wait up. He says. June will pause and turn back. Yes, Hero. Finally, I get to talk to you. He says. Okay. So I was just going to invite you to the birthday parties tomorrow. They're early in the morning, he says. You know, because your birthday's around here. And 
I sort of need to introduce one of you to my family, and I think you're the best one to do it, he says. Because, you know, you're really good at controlling everything up there. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So, my family doesn't deal a lot with other people. They sort of shut down, and, and at a birthday party, they get really hyper. So, it's going to be very difficult for them to control themselves to do that. So I think that one at a time and you first should probably be the way that they meet my friends. I have a minor confession to make. I've been invited already. My mom sent you a letter? No. You'll find out when we get there. But I'll gladly join you. What's going on? He says, So, wait... One wheel contacted you already? I don't know who this one wheel is. He didn't? Who contacted you? Anyway. June but now I have another reason smile on her face. to invite you. Mm -hmm. My cousin, one wheel. The story that I told my family about our journey spread, right? So they, they heard about it. Um, and I sort of backed off from all of the dangerous details, but my cousin, one wheel came to me and said that he met you. And of course he didn't meet you. So I was asking him about it and he said that there was a godmother who gave him bad information named Juniper and that he looked, she looked <laughs> just like you. And I realized that it was those, you yeah. said that there were some people, right? That were mimicking you. Yeah. So it's one of those guys, and they conned him. But he knows what they're doing in the city, and I figured that you could talk to him and get some information about what they've actually been doing. I think that would be wise. Thank you, Hero. He nods. When should I expect it? Um, about 8 a.m. To, like, noon? What time is the summit supposed to happen tomorrow? Like 4 p.m. Okay, she goes, I think that will give us plenty of time before the summit. Yeah, kind of a busy day, but... When is it not? Yeah, lately. You know, I used to never have any busy days. <laughs> well, never intentionally busy. Well, they say one of the worst curses one could ever inflict upon someone is may your life be interesting, so... They weren't wrong. Anyway, so that was what I wanted to speak to you about. Should I bring anything? Um, no. I think you should be good. She pauses and she goes, Would you prefer me be me, or would you prefer me be a godmother? Uh, no. I want them to know you. Very well, then. Okay. Well, I think I'll head on home for the night, then. Hang on. Where is he staying? His aunt's house. Okay. Why don't you take one of the carriages from the school? Uh, okay. Why? Well... You've known to be traveling with Isaac, and he's being attacked on the streets. It would be wise not to go by yourself. I guess that's true, he says. All right, I'll do it. Um, do I talk to somebody specific about that? She reaches into her pocket, jots down a quick note. Just hand this to any page in the school, or apprentice in the school. Okay, I got it. And where are you headed after you speak to Tiro? Uh, first, she's going to go to her office and call Annalise. Okay. What do you have to say now? Actually, screw that. She's going to go down to the very lowest basements and go through the mirror. As you... And that takes you to the wheelhouse? She's going to the wheelhouse. Once again, 
you enter into a faraway place, one that is hidden away and buttoned up. In this case, you walk into a cacophony of meek headed through the hallway, making it quite difficult to get through for a time until you finally make your way to Annalisa's office. You see the... Uh, she is currently in her fairy form when you walk in. She normally is. And... She? Um, she has tea boiling in the corner. And... Tiny. What? I'm just picturing a teeny tiny pot. <laughs> it's very cute. <laughs> oh, good, you're here. I was just working on something, and I think I may have made a breakthrough, she says. She gestures for the doors to close, and she'll pop up onto the desk in her own very form. She goes, I've been working on a spell. She's going to sort of fly down and, like, nudge the paper forward with her foot towards you. June will raise it up into the air in front of her with her own magic. As you look at the spell, she has, and you go over it with your eyes, you see a true stroke of genius in this magic for its simplicity and its capabilities. When June looks at a piece of paper, normally it's just a quick glance. She does two or three. She was about to put it down, and then she pulls it back up as she looks at it. She shares the spell called Silvery Barbs, a first-level magic used by bard sorcerers and wizards. A reaction you can take when a creature within 60 feet of you succeeds on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Use the spell as a reaction. The creature that makes that check must re-roll the d20 and use the lower result. And then you can choose a different creature within range and you can choose yourself as that other creature. The chosen creature has advantage on the next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw in the next minute. The creature empowered by the spell can only be empowered one time or one, one, one at a time. You can't empower by a creature multiple times. So if you do empower it again, it just overwrites it? Yeah. Okay. June does the double read, and she goes, Annalise, this is brilliant. She says, thank you. I really think it's something nice, she says. You're right, it is. I figured it would be a great spell for the new godmother. Um, force? Squadron? That seems a lot, a lot. <laughs> um, flight. Mm. Clan. We'll think about it. It's, it requires some work, <laughs> she says. And also, I hoped it could be of use to you. I can definitely see how it could be. I've also come up with a few more. I would love to see them. How about this one? She says, kicking another spell towards you. You can tell that she's been at work for this on, for like a week. Mm. Her next spell is called Kinetic Jaunt. What? Kinetic Jaunt. I heard Connecticut. <laughs> I <didn't see> <laughs> Which sounds nice, going through like a jaunt in Connecticut. In like... Jaunt into New England. It's all That's... good. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's the power. That's the whole spell is it transports you to New England in the fall and you can just wander around. <laughs> what? Terry, can you give me that spell? <laughs> I want it. It's like a peace of mind spell. I think we can all go. Let's, let's all go to Connecticut, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want the other one. Oh, nope. One. Sorry, you're not a bard, sorcerer, or wizard. <sighs> this one is a level two transmutation. It's a bonus action. Concentration up to a minute and only requires somatic components. You magically empower your movement with dance-like steps, giving yourself the following benefits for up to a minute. 
Your walking speed increases by 10 feet, you don't provoke opportunity attacks, and you can move through the space of another creature, and it doesn't count as difficult terrain. If you end your turn in another creature's space, you are shunted to the last occupied space you occupied, and you take 1d8 force damage. Cool. And she shows you two additional spells. Uh, so yeah, she gives you that and then asks, so what did you come down here for? Well, actually, Isaac mentioned that this might be a good opportunity. You remember how you were telling me about the Emerald Lake and its transformation? Right. I was wondering if you could go and check it out. And I thought you could take Clover and the, for lack of a better word, squadron with you as a practice run and for protection. I think that would be a great start, she says. I heard about Zarifan. Yes. I'm so sorry. It was necessary. What happened? Masrian has been affected by the shadowing. I remember I... Did I ever speak to you about that? You did? I can't believe it. Another one of them. I thought it was just her. So did we. Apparently he felt it coming on, which was why he was trying to recall Rafe back to heaven. But he didn't tell us that. I'm sure Rafe wouldn't have fallen unintentionally if he had known. Being said, I... She will become large and wrap her arms around you. Oh, I'm tiny. Oh, then she'll wrap her arms around you without becoming large. <laughs> the awkward she that big. She goes, I know it's selfish, but I didn't want to go back. Borrowed knowledge? Not that I'd say that out loud, of course, to anyone else, but... Right. She says. I hated that he fell because it put him at danger, but... It was nice to have him close by. Yes. It's been a long time since we set aside our duties and just went. On the list, there's something I've been wanting to talk to you about. What? Not now, of course after all of this has been settled. I want to train Brunella to take a bigger part. More than just your own. What do you mean? I'm planning to step out. I've been here long enough. I'm a fossil. This... This place relies... on you. And that is why we need to start implementing more practices that phase me out. It is possible to run this place completely without me. We just need to implement it. I'm planning on after everything is settled. I'm planning to go to Rafe. Then let her be like you. What? Let her be immortal. Why? For the exact same reasons I said no the first time. The angel's plan was always flawed. It isn't their plan anymore. It would be our plan. I 
would never curse another person to that existence. What do you mean, curse? You're going to go live off with your love forever. Perhaps. Of course it will eventually change. Isn't it called the ever because it's supposed to be forever? What does it matter if it's here or there? Fairies' lives are long. Not long enough. I'm dying, Juniper. I know. Then why are you just watching it? You're while right. you make your vacation trip. Yes, I'm bitter, all right? I'm watching you a million years, my senior. Maybe more than that. Meanwhile, I have trouble walking. You want somebody to follow in your footsteps? I'm right here. If Sarfin hadn't left, I was going to ask him. Don't I deserve a choice? I've never asked for anything. Not once. I made your dream a reality. Can't you understand? I don't want to leave my children. She looks visibly afraid. You see wrinkles appear on her. The guise is gone now. An old woman stands before you. The pain on June's face is real. She also feels it, but clearly for different reasons. I will make you no promises right now, but I will. Think on it. As she sits on a tiny thimble, you can tell that she's going to have trouble getting back up. I'm just so tired of being tired. June puts her arms around her. I wanted to tell you for so long. Aren't old people supposed to be crass? Break all the rules. I'll see what I can do. But you know my feelings on this. But. It's not my choice. She's going to look up at you with watery eyes. I can't guarantee it will happen. But I'll look into it. You know I don't make empty promises. Which is why I can't guarantee it will happen. But for you, my niece, my only blood, I will try. I just hope you don't regret it in the future. Thank you. The door opens, her secretary. June, June is in fairy form. She would not allow anyone else to come in the room. There's a knock on the door. As you look forward and look back, you suddenly see young Annalise again. June jumps up and she is suddenly large next to the table. She's going to go like that <clears throat> and her tears, her makeup is back. Yeah, she snaps her fingers and she looks normal. Come in, Annalise says. 
Did you have anything else to speak to Annalise about? Uh, just normal day-to-day stuff. She would quickly breeze through that. Do. Thank you. You breeze through, and then? And then she will tell her the plans for how it's going to work. They're going to, she's going to teleport with Clover and the other godmothers along with the crew of Yuffie's ship. Yeah, Runner, thank you there, I got it. Uh, oh. To Bridgewalk. By the way, an update on Cleeping, she says. He's doing very well, apparently. Good. He's a prodigy, as they call it. Really? He's already fine on Drake's. You will be very happy to hear that. I know she missed him. So did Walks. A little detail that you might like. Sound of rain gave him a little Euphemia doll. He oh. hugs it when he sleeps. That's adorable. It's very cute, she says. And he speaks, apparently, in her voice when he sleeps. Oh, maybe I can make her cry. I want to be there for it, but... <laughs> Follow the scales I recorded on a crystal. Perfect. I need to get back, apparently. Did God tell you I'm going to a birthday party tomorrow? I never get any of the local news, she says. <laughs> she goes, um, here are the reports that we've gotten from the messengers, and here are the local reports from each area's catastrophes. Oh, June will recreate all the information she got from them as well. You guys are, like, trading uh-huh. scrolls back and forth. You got, like, a pyramid of scrolls as you walk out. I don't need that. She just glances at them all, and then she knows, and then she puts them back. But Burr. Uh, Annalise rolls her eyes, and that puts them away. She goes, what? It's a lot easier for transporting. As easy as can be. You see that all of the intensity is gone from her. She does tell her about Rosé. She is incredulous at the amount of recklessness involved in such a move. Yep. What has gotten into you? She says. You know what? It's fine. Nothing happened, she says. You best hope I keep recklessness up. Slark, huh? Yes. I'll look in the historical file and see if we can't find anything. I don't recall anything myself, but, I mean, I haven't read everything, so. She knows. the thing that concerns me most is the fact that Danbleth also has one. Do you think this Slarg would tell Danbleth that you have one? Probably, yes. So then, we're playing a waiting game. Yes. To see what information we can get out of Slarg for free. Kind of, yes. Also, she mentioned... Does it seem prideful? Did it? What did it say? Does he seem prideful? Him more seemed confident than prideful. She says that. Hmm. I was hoping we might be able to bend a little pride against it. No. However, apparently there is something dark in the city. Of darkness itself. must be powerful. We're not sensing anything. And neither is Garen. Jagaran was the one who said he felt it. Mm. If Jagaran felt it, it's there. I can get out one of their hearts and spin it and see if I can get something. You have a couple extra in your office, right? Mm, I believe so. Feel free. All right. I'll take a look. Meet me tomorrow. Uh, be in the academy by at least one. 
Have they formally invited you to the summit yet? No, but it's only a matter of time. Not to mention I plan to go there tonight in order to acquire permission, specifically, to raid a tomb. She rolls her eyes. I don't want to, Isaac does. He wants the sword. Okay. Well, gotta go get that sword, treasure hunter. Shut up, niece. <laughs> Have fun. Mm. Sounds like you should have just let me do it myself. <laughs> as she le- as you leave, Annalise is gonna... And then she turns back to her papers. Thank you for joining us, Noble Heroes. We will go ahead and call the session there for the time being. Really appreciate you coming by, joining us. And remember, do try this at home.